Hey everyone, I'm Joel Green and welcome to Curiosity Quest Goes Green, the show that explores what you, the viewer, are curious about. Now today, our quest letter is a little unique. It's coming from you guys. I wonder where water comes from. What happens when a water pipe breaks in your house? Why is water so important? How do they make it clean? Is our water safe to drink? If we use enough water or are we using too much? How can we ensure our water supply stays safe for our future, for our children? So that's what I'm really curious about. Because of you, we're in your city, Upland, where we're gonna learn all about where your water comes from and how you get it. So let's begin today's Curiosity Quest Goes Green. Le oh, left, okay, I'm sorry, we're going left here. We're in the city of Upland, where they have a very unique water source situation. And to take us through that is Allison Loki. Allison, how are you doing today? Great, Joel, thank you. So let's talk about where water started here in Upland. Well, you know, it's an interesting thing. Upland is unique because we have three supply sources, and then we have three types of different kinds of water. So one of our su supply sources is directly a result of George Chafee Jr., who's behind us. George Chafee came here in 1882, and immediately he saw a future for this area, mostly in agriculture. And he envisioned grapes, citrus, pears, apples. So he bought 8,000 acres of land. And in that buying of the land, he ended up purchasing the water rights to the company that would become San Antonio Water Company. This is back in the 1800s. 1882 was when that water company was founded. So there's the three companies okay. and then three actual physical sources. Sources of water. Right. So when it comes to other cities, do other cities have three companies? No, oh, not, so generally. not generally. Not generally, okay. They generally have their own basins, they have their own groundwater rights, but they don't have anywhere else to pull from. And that's why water in other communities is so much more expensive than it is here. Which is why we're here in Upland. So where do we start? Well, one of our three sources that I think would be the most fun to start at is surface water up at San Antonio Creek. All right, well, it's a beautiful day down here, but let's head up to the creek. Let's go. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. In the summer, Upland uses as much as 33 million gallons of water each day. Allison, I can't think of a more serene or beautiful place. It is a beautiful location. This is San Antonio Creek. Wow. And this is a water source for the city of Upland. You know, it's amazing. When, when we were coming up here, it literally looks like there's mountains on this side, mountains on this side, mountains in the back, and then this little creek just coming right through them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly how it works, but it's not always so little. Oh. In a wet year, you can have a lot more water in this creek than you do right now because it's been dry. So historically, this creek ranges from 80, about 85,000 gallons to 3 billion gallons a huge amount of water and it's all dependent on Whoa. the amount of snow we get during the year. Where's it all going? Well, a lot of it we use. This is a big recreational area for the community too. People mm -hmm. come up here and swim, bring their kids up here, have picnics, and they probably don't realize that they're swimming in their drinking water, but they are. Wait, 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 what? The I know. people that are watching this are gonna go, what? Exactly, <laughs> that's why we have to be so careful with treatment because once it's had body contact, we have to make sure that we treat it properly to be safe for people to drink. But that's the way water works. So you're basically telling me that there's a pipe somewhere at the end of this or a big old pump that's gonna pull this out and take it to an area that's it's gonna be clean. It's basically, yeah. When it comes to surface water, the last question I have is, does the city of Upland receive any other source of surface water than no. this? This is it. This is it, okay. But we're lucky to have this because a lot of places don't have surface water at all. They only have groundwater or imported water. The fact that we have this quality of supply that is available to us in wet years is really important. So let's go uh, discuss groundwater. 
Great, let's go. Right. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Hey, check this out. The deepest well in Upland is a thousand feet deep. Allison, here we are again on top of San Antonio Dam. Right. Why are we up here? Well, we're up here because this is the best example where you can see a groundwater basin. Upland is really fortunate in that we have rights either through ourselves or through the other two companies we discussed to groundwater basins. So th you're talking about this, this area right here where there are no houses and right. nothing, right? Right, but you could still, you could even have houses on top of a groundwater basin. Okay. Um, really, that's an, uh, the, the correct term is an aquifer. Okay. So what you need to think of that is, is almost like a giant swimming pool under the ground where when it rains, the water percolates down into the, into the ground and it's basically stored there for later use. On top of that, we have in front of us what are called retention basins. Okay, so when it does rain, we try to capture some of that water and hold it so it can percolate down and restore or recharge those basins. And then they're there for later use. You know, I, I'm, I don't know if other people are thinking this, but I'm up here standing looking at the beautiful mountains behind us. Right. Will this ever fill up back here? Yes, it has. Um, in 2010, there was so much water here that you couldn't see any of this ground. It was at least halfway up behind what we're seeing. So it's pretty, it was pretty full. Wow. The Mount San Antonio is the highest peak here. It's at over 10,000 feet. Yeah. So we do get periodically a lot of snow. And the best way to think of that as another water bank. And it's just holding the snow for us to when it's the season where we need water like in the summer. As a water department, are you guys getting a little nervous? Are you getting what's going on in the, uh, at the city? Oh, you know, we're planning. You're planning. We're planning. Okay. I wouldn't call it nervous. We do have a lot of uh, sources of supply, and we can always um, get more imported water to make up the shortfall. However, when you have several years that are dry, and you have basins that are starting to go dry, and you have wells that aren't working because there's not enough water to pump, it requires a lot of planning and thought. So you're telling me that uh, one, maybe five, maybe 10, 20 years ago, this very day was already planned out. Yes. The action that Upland's taken right now was already Correct. in the plans, in Correct. the works. This resource, water, we can't go without. No. But yet, we're, we're kind of at the mercy of Mother Nature. Yes, you are. Well, we've talked about the, the two sources now, obviously surface water back there, groundwater here. So let's talk about the next one, imported water? Yes. Where do we go great. for that? We're going to go down to the Water Facilities Authority, and we'll tour that plant. Where does imported water come from? Maybe water ducts, the sewer, the sky, the ocean. Canada, Mexico. <laughs> Rain. Other countries. I don't know, from out of state? All right, I'm out here with Mark. Mark, first of all, where are we and who are you? My name is Mark Wiley. I'm the water operations manager for the city of Upland. This is our water treatment plant for, for Upland, and this treats imported water from the state of California. Let's go check it out. Let's go. All right. It is loud in here. Yes, it's very loud. We have about 14 million gallons a day of water coming through this pipeline right now, and it, it creates quite a bit of noise. 14 million gallons of water? This plant is actually uh, capable of bringing in 81 million gallons of water, but right now we just don't need it, so we're only taking 14. The water is coming from Metropolitan Water, which you said was up at Lake Silverwood? That's our nearest reservoir. We bring that water down, and a lot of the uh, communities here along the San Bernardino and San Gabriel Mountains take water off of that pipeline. On a, a daily or monthly average, how many million gallons of water is up with pulling off? Maybe about eight. Now, for the whole community, you would not be able to survive or maintain on just 8 million gallons of water, correct? Absolutely not. What percentage is imported water? Probably about uh, 25%. 25%, OK. So the smaller percentage. Absolutely. I see the word raw water. Is this what, clean water, not clean water? It's not clean water. We can't drink this. Oh. This is exactly what's coming out of the uh, lakes up there in Silverwood. Oh, wow. So if you were boating or swimming or... This is it. This is it. Absolutely. Oh, wow. And then so all the water's coming off of here, and then now it's going basically where? Our next stop for this water are our water filters. So 
So Mark, is this where the filtration process actually begins? This is where it starts. And you can see over there, we have a little bit of the uh, alum uh, and the uh, flock left on top, and that's the stuff that kind of flows, and it's gonna accumulate down on that end of uh, our filter bed. What this water does in these big troughs is we have about four or five feet of what's called anthracite sand, and the water perks down through that sand, and that sand takes out all of that gook, and yeah. uh, below the sand, there's a layer of coal and that coal takes out everything else. And where is that water going once it goes below the surface? Once it filters through, there's a big trough underneath and it collects that water and it takes it into pipeline and then we inject a little bit of chlorine so we can guarantee the bacteriological quality to make sure it's safe and then it goes out into the distribution system like this tank we see. So at this point, once you hit it with a little bit of chlorine, are we, I mean, is it safe for the community to uh, consume? Yes. Is this the same process that surface water will go through, the, what, the steps we just took? Yes, uh, this is on a much larger scale. Um, we have a much smaller plant about the base of the San Antonio Dam, um, but we're, we don't get 80 million gallons a day through it. <laughs> Mark, will groundwater go through the same filtration and cleaning process? No, um, when you're talking about groundwater, it, it could have uh, a lot of different constituents in it. It could have nitrates in it. Here in Upland, um, this all used to be agriculture, so we had a lot of uh, orange groves and lemon groves up here. And uh, from that era, we have a little bit of nitrates in our water uh, because they used to uh, fertilize the uh, trees, and so that, st that stuff all goes down into the groundwater. You know, Mark, it's crazy because you're talking about agriculture that have been in this area for over 100 years, right? Yeah. You're saying that the nitrates and some of the chemicals, maybe not that long ago, but are residual in the ground from long, long time ago? We have to be very careful about what we do on top of the ground because what we do on top of the ground eventually gets down to our water table. Water in Upland is a big undertaking and consists of many different areas, including supply management, regulatory compliance, treatment, distribution, maintenance and operations, wastewater, meter reading, billing and administration, and conservation. The areas that we are highlighting today are not necessarily the most important, they're just different parts of the process. What is a well? A place where they get water from underground. Like where water comes from? Put a little pail, they go like that, sometimes it comes up, you know, water from the pail. A well is something deep, it's kind of like, um, Kind of like a water fountain. A well is a, um, a holding place underneath the ground for water. A well is where you get some water, like in Africa, people walk to a well for 70, 80 miles, carrying a pot on their heads. All right, so we're out at one of the wells, one of the many wells, right, Javier? Yes. What exactly is a well? Motor and pump combination apparatus that draws water from underground uh, in the water tables beneath Earth's surface. So it's pretty incredible that, you know, for the last 10 years plus, this well right here has been pulling water out of the ground and for probably the next 10 plus years, right? Yes. And as long as the water keeps going into the ground, as we were learning about earlier, then this will keep producing water for the residents here. Yes. So Javier, what are we waiting for? Let's do some checks. We come to the motor uh -huh. and we check for any unusual extreme heat or vibration. What we do with this oil is we send it down this oil dripper down the tube and shaft to keep everything lubricated, all the mechanical parts that go all the way down to the bowls. What we do is we'll check our pressure here. Well discharge pressure is about 10 to 12 PSI. PSI is? Pounds per square inch. Force. The force, yes. Mm. Then we check our flow, and right now it's producing about 1,190 gallons per minute and it'll fluctuate 10 to 15 gallons. Once the water passes this flow meter, we have an injection point here where we introduce a disinfectant agent. A disinfectant agent, ooh, that sounds like a big tech term word. And what does it do? What does that mean? Basically what it does is it makes the water safe for consumption. So literally at this point, we pull it up out of the ground, we, uh, we introduce a disinfectant agent, and oh, I like that word, and then now it's ready to drink? Pretty much. How do they make sure that the water is safe for you to drink? They filter it through a special filter. Clean it. How? With water. Because it's made out of H2O. 
Oh, I, I've read a book once where there was like a water plant where they kind of try to clean the water, or there's filters to keep the sticks and stuff from the rivers out of the water, and then they kind of put some chemicals through it to make sure it's not that contaminated. Through water purification in our local city. What are you looking at me for? I'm blank. So how do we ensure the water's safe for consumption? Javier? So we'll grab our sample jar here, uh -huh. which requires about 10 milliliters of water. OK. And then I have a dispenser with a reagent that will turn the water pink. Yes. And that tells us right away that we have a chlorine residual in the system. And then we have to measure how much chlorine is in there. So that there's not too much chlorine in there. Not too much, and that there is enough to meet our not standards. Not too little. Gotcha. OK. All right, we're, uh, we're out in a residential neighborhood again, moved to different locations all over Upland, and I'm here with Darren and Dave. Now, Darren, what are we doing out here? Uh, we're here to exercise the city's water valves and flush the fire hydrants. Some of the importance in that is to make sure that the valves are working properly. Yeah, Dave looks like he's ready to go. He's ready to go. He's going to pop that road cap. Now, how often do you do this, like for this particular one, how often is this done? It actually takes us four and a half to five years to go through the whole city. Whoa! Yeah. OK, now what's he doing here? OK, so now he's visually inspecting the can to see if there's any debris that needs to be cleaned out. OK. Now, we're not in any danger, right? Uh, no. OK, you haven't had like one, you're doing this and you're No. no. <laughs> not that you'll admit on no, camera. No. All right, that's good. Are we holding you up at all? Well, yeah. yeah no. I'm supposed to say no. We're helping <laughs> no, you in the process. You're, you're helping us. You're, you're helping us a great deal. <laughs> so now we're going to open this cap. Okay. Let's. Uh, do I need to move out of the way? No, or? you're okay. Okay. What are you doing on that? Whoa. Hello. This is the valve that opens this outlet. So a lot of people may see, you know, flooding going down the streets. It's like, what's going on? We're wasting all this water. Yep. But they don't realize that it's a necessary process, not only for the health of the system, but for the uh, quality of the water. Gotcha, gotcha. OK, so he's turning it on now? Turning it on. All right. And we're, we're good. Oh, I feel it under the, whoa. <laughs> I feel it. OK, he's going to get wet. I just, whoa. Yeah, right. just, OK. Now, that, that was pretty nasty looking in there yeah, coming that, out. Yeah, that was the stagnant water that sets in that hydrant itself. That initially comes out first. Well, Darren, Dave, I appreciate your time. But we're off to our next stop. Let's go. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Did you guys know that there are 292 miles of water pipeline in Upland? All right, Allison, all right, so we're right here on the street. We're on Euclid and 21st. Right. And I brought this this big, big old huge map, map with us, and I have no idea what I'm looking at. So what am I looking at? OK, what you're looking at is all the different mains and water infrastructure in this particular area. Wait a minute, you have like? Pages and pages what? and pages. So when you have to make any fixes or changes or alterations, people bring out these big old huge maps, huh? They do. And where Mark Warner is actually working, it's a six inch line coming off. We're fixing this valve right here. Allison, when it comes to water and the distribution of water, things break. It happens a lot. Upland is an old city. We have old infrastructure. So this pipeline is probably from the early 1950s. Wow. And we have pipeline that is actually older than that mm -hmm. in other parts of the city. And just normal wear and tear, eventually it's going to break. It's so crazy because, you know, again, you, you think of water and how we just turn on our tap and mm -hmm. we kind of just take for granted. Of course. All that goes into this infrastructure, this big web underneath the ground. Absolutely. And that's exactly what it is. All right. So we should let these guys finish up and get these residents their water. Uh, absolutely. Let's do it. Well, we're not doing that. Gonna, like, no, no, we let them. Yeah, we don't have hard hats. Or, <laughs> yeah, you know anything like that. We don't like have that. our stuff. Safety gear, so we got. We just, just go. We to gotta lunch. go. <laughs> yeah. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Upland is located on the trail that was used by natives and old Spanish missionaries, now known as the Old Spanish Trail. Ooh, look at that Pac-Man again. I'm sorry, <laughs> Nate. Tell me what we're looking at. Uh, you're looking at uh, our Plant 7, 17th Street pumping station. When we were over uh, with Javier earlier, he, he was showing us this building. 
um, that was a big reservoir. Mm -hmm. I guess where all the water that was coming out of the well was going into that building. Mm -hmm. Is this similar to that building right there? Yes, it is. Can I get to that from here? Yeah. Go all right, ahead. so we go to system. Look at that, I got it now. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> all right, tell me where I'm going, plan. Right down here, that's 7-8 right okay, there. Okay, 7-8, yeah. bam. So, boom, look at that. Yeah. So this is exactly where we were earlier. Yes. So this is, oh, okay, yeah, this, I see the pipe. So the, the Pac-Man dots are going into the reservoir. Yes. So you can monitor, you know, water coming out of the well, going into the reservoir, and going back down into the distribution system. Yes. So that's it. Let's head out of Uplands Water HQ. We're out in a residential neighborhood right now, standing in front of not a machine, but a huge, giant truck, which I guess is a machine, Robert. Yes, Robert, is. what is this thing behind us? Well, what we have behind us is a, uh, it's a combination truck. And what it is, it's a vacuum truck, and it's also a, a water jetting truck. When we're talking about water here in, here in Upland, yeah. this is part of the whole process, right? Oh, the yeah. maintenance part of, of keeping the sewer lines and, and everything clear, right? Right, people tend to think of the sewer as the last thing on their list because they flush the toilet and then that's out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. But really, it's, uh, it's one of the biggest infrastructures we have in the city of Upland. There's 226 miles of sanitary sewer system and, and it's growing because we're still developing and it all has to be maintained. Robert, when we, we walked up to this truck, uh -huh. uh, the first thing I was noticing besides this huge contraption on the front was like all these danger, danger, danger warning signs. But tell us why. Why do you Why? have all these signs here, man? Because it's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> there used to be a time when everybody would go in the manhole. Yeah. And I'll show you what the manhole looks like in just a second, because they have this idea that it's like a, it's like San Francisco, and it's really big, and you can walk through it, and it's just not the case. Oh, Most okay. of our lines are eight-inch lines. Oh, very, very small, then. Very small, but the manhole wow. is the big part, and you have an eight-inch line. We run this um, specialized tip. Mm -hmm. It's called the Warthog, and it pulls itself, and we go against the flow. And as we clean, we come back down. We'll turn on the truck, we'll put the, uh, the, uh, the, the tip in there, and we'll show you what it looks like, okay? All right, cool. All right. The flow looks good. Flow is good, flow is good, and that's an important thing. You know, if we're doing our job, if we're doing our job right, you'll never even know that we're here. You know, and that's the important thing about this, is it's such a, a, it's such a big, city investment in infrastructure. Yeah. It's just imperative that it be maintained. So that's what we do. We're out here to, to do our job. If you see Robert or any of his other buddies out on the street, give him a high five. Say, good job. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> what percentage of water is used outside? 97 percent, 90 percent, 98. 26 percent? 70 percent. I think we use about, I don't know, maybe 50 percent. So I know that for those of you that control your sprinkler system at your house, you probably think you have a crazy sprinkler system. A lot of buttons and everything. Look at this. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is a totally different kind of controller and it's one we're trying to get the public to take advantage of. And it's called a weather-based irrigation controller. So it actually monitors the weather, it monitors the temperature, soil moisture, and a variety of different things. And then it decides how to water. But wow. what makes this one special is that it's also controlled by a phone, a mobile phone, a droid, or an iPhone. Because right now what happens is if it rains, someone has to physically go turn off every single controller in the city. There's 13 parks and a lot of medians. So that means a person has to do that. So I, I hear the sprinklers on right now. Right, let's, let's go take a look. Go take a look at, look. <laughs> Don, Don's on his phone. It's right. just so funny, he's on his phone. What did he turn on the sprinklers behind him here? Right, he can control every sprinkler within this park right from his phone. And then there's another park we're testing as well. I'm gonna walk over here and I'm gonna expect, as the camera's rolling, that these are gonna be on at any moment. But, but you wouldn't normally water in the middle of the day. Ah, see, this is good, okay, so we're- Because, in fact, in Upland, it is illegal to water in the middle of the day. Wait a minute, is that just for parks or is that for everybody? That's for everybody. I wonder so if you're, everybody knows that. You're not allowed to water between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. Wow. Because of evaporation. And, and Don's showing us what we should not be doing. Don, did you know it was illegal for the city of Upland to actually turn on the waters between 10 and 6? What are you doing? We're testing the sprinklers. You're <laughs> <laughs> testing the That was a good, that was good, good catch. People should test their sprinklers. You should run them at least once a month and make sure that they're working properly. So we've been making our way around the city 
and we're back here out in front of the Upland City Yard. Right, this is the Public Works Yard, and a new project for us was that this was originally completely grass, and we decided to provide a really good example, and this is basically a living classroom that okay. we can use to uh, educate residents about native and drought tolerant plants. I know people watching at home are probably thinking, ooh, how do I find out about when the next class is and how can I come out and join? Our classes are basically open to anyone, but how we advertise them is either in your utility bill, we use the message board at City Hall, it's on our website. I wanna thank Allison and everyone here at the City of Upland for showing us and teaching us about where your water comes from right here. And I wanna thank all of you that participated in the city and telling us what you're curious about. Now, if there's something you wanna know more about, let me hear from you. Go to curiositycoast.org, click on the Send Us on a Quest link and simply tell me what you're curious about. And it could be you that sends us on our next green adventure. And remember, it's our planet. It's our responsibility to take care of it. So I'm curious, have you gone green? I'm Joel Green and I'll see you next time. <laughs> you, guys, you guys didn't see it. I sat right there and I slid back. <laughs> In the sea, um, sea creatures um, live there, like fish, fish, sharks, se seals. Kellen, say that's a wrap. That's a wrap. <laughs>